Hello everyone, welcome to Analytics Cloud. This is your host Gaurav, and today we we are coming up with one of the video where we have curated top five five spark questions that was asked in an Amazon interview. So we have got few requests from uh, people that they wanted us to create a video on the interview questions that was recently asked for a data engineer position in any of the five companies. So we reached out for a few of the folks who has recently uh, given interview in Amazon and these were the, the five most questions that was asked recently. Okay, so just have a look to this video, uh, try to understand this question. We, we have tried to give a brief explanation of all of these questions that we could uh, do let us know if you have any doubts or if you want us to create any new video you could just post it in a comment and we will be happy to assist you okay so also uh, before you start you must know that this interview questions was asked in an amazon for a role of data engineer l5 position and the skills that they were looking for was sql PySpark, apache kafka hadoop and any of the cloud technologies so you should be well versed with sql and PySpark, starting from the basic to the advanced concepts okay so uh, that's it for the day you could just uh, enjoy the video and please post us any comments that you are uh, for any doubts or any new videos that you want us to make and please also please do not forget to subscribe that will help us to bring more videos to you and help you people to get into data engineering so if you could see, uh, we'll just take one question at a time. Where if we we'll go to the first question, so let's say it it is given a PySpark data frames, which is sales data, right? So we have a sales data data frame, and in that data frame we have three columns, which is a product ID, okay? Then we have category, and we have sales amount, right? So and what what exactly it is asking? It is asking to us to write a code to calculate the total sales amount for each product category so this is a product category uh, let's say for electro electronics this one and this electronic if you'll see uh, sale total sales amount will be 500 plus 7 which will be 1200 basically and similarly for this apparel which is another product category uh, the sales amount will be 700 so that is what we have to uh, do in our case so this question uh, looks uh, pretty uh, simple where it could be where we just have to do a sum of the sales amount right and based on the group like we will be doing a group by on the, this particular category if you are familiar with sql right let's say uh, if not then what i'll do is anyways this this question was asked for the PySpark data frame but let me just give you a, a hint how do we solve if you want to solve it in a sql first right so let's say what exactly it is asking let's say we, if we can write the select clause where we have category so we have category column now let's say if you want to figure it out uh, what is the sum right so we can find out sum of sales amount okay from let's say if we have sales table or sales data table right and then we can do a group by on the category that's it so this way we can find out the sum if we want we can find out the average as well right so same thing we want to achieve in uh, PySpark so I have already noted this question in uh, Databricks so let's go to the Databricks so this is the question that we have where we want to calculate the total sales right so let us just start uh, writing the code i have already set up the cluster okay and cluster is currently running so let me just add a cell here and let's just uh, start coding so the very first thing let's say if we have this data i'm taking this data as a kind of a data frame okay so let's say initially in order to create a data frame we would need two things okay so in what the first thing is data of course and second thing is the structure of the data like the column of the data so let's say if i write the syntax of it let's say if, uh, what i could do is we can write a data frame as a df equals to then we can write spark dot create data frame okay now i need to pass two things one is data and the other is columns okay now let us define these two things first okay so if i'll go here let's define data so this is how you need to define data where you'll have to give a square bracket and then uh, 
you will have to make an entry of each records that you want to pass let's say it is one and then we have electronics so the string will go with the quotes correct and then we have 500 and then let me just copy this three more times since we have four records okay and then i'll make the changes now let's say this is two and then we have a parallel and the value of this is 300 really the product id is three we have electronics and the value is 700 when the product id is four we have apparel and it is 400 right so this is how we define data now let us just define columns so as, a, as it is already mentioned that we have three columns one is product id other is category other one is sales amount right so these are the three columns that is specified here now what exactly do we need to do so we have data we have column we have created a new data frame which is df equals to spark dot create data frame right so if i'll run this could see if you could see this data frame is already created where we have this product id say if you want me to uh let's say show the data okay so this is how our table is correct now let's come to the uh, logic part of this so we need to calculate the total sales amount for each product category so what we will do is to perform like here, let's uh, let us just perform an aggregation okay so let's say we'll have new df that we are going to create and we will take the old df data frame which we have defined here right so we'll do a group by as we saw in the sql right we will do group by so what column do we use here so we have to find out the sales amount based on the category right so we will be doing group by on the category level so let me pass category okay then group by is done on the category then what do we need to do we need to find the sum right so in order to do that we will have to use an aggregate that is that's what the is a PySpark syntax like let's say we'll be having dot agg and then inside this agg inside this bracket we will have sum which we want to do for the sales amount right so let's say sales amount let's say we can uh, give it as an alias also here in this case let's say I could mention dot alias and then I can give it as total sales right so this is the uh, closing bracket for aggregate this is the uh, Okay, this is yeah this is the closing bracket for aggregate right so this is this looks fine to me and now let's do one thing let's just uh, run this and see what is the output yes so it is if you could see it has already added the sales amount for electronics and apparel as well right so electronics 1200 apparel 700 what if we let's say if we want to add few stuff in this question like let's say if the interviewer ask you to find out what is the average sales correct so what you could do is instead of here once you have defined the aggregate you could pass any function that you want so uh, apart from sum let's say i want to find out the average so what i'll do is i'll write average of sales amount correct and then I can give it alias average sales right now if you'll run this you'll have two different columns correct one is total sales one is average sales so like let's say here uh, we have electronics so 1200, uh, 1200 uh, we have two product counts so divided by two that is equals to 600 so that's what the average we are getting it here okay 
so this was just a kind of an aggregation question that was asked so i hope uh, uh, you'll you would have a better understanding now and you will be able to uh, solve any other problem that comes in for aggregation correct so let us just move to the next question uh, where we again have uh, something with respect to joining the data frames right so here if you could see we have two different data frames one is order one is order details right so in the order data frame we have two columns one is the order id and the customer who is doing that order correct and if we we'll go to the order details data frame we have three different columns one is order id we have product and then we have price right so for this particular product id which is 101 uh, we have a product a and this 100 is the price correct similarly we have 101 b 50 so what we want to do here is we need to find out what is the total order value for each of the customer that has placed the order so let's say in this one data of data frame one we have the customer id one right so it is having the order id is 101 so if i go here which is order id as 101 so there are two order id as 101 one is for the product a the other is for the product b so that means we uh, this customer has ordered two different product for price 150 so the total order of this customer is 150 correct similarly for the customer id 2 it has placed one order which is 102 uh, like the order id is 102 basically and since we have the only one required that means we just have one uh, product that is assigned to that order id and that is having a price of rupees 100 right so let's just solve this using a uh, pie spark okay so let's say uh, we will be defining two different data frames first right so let's say i will write first data which will be the orders data correct so it, since it is a numeric we will not pass any uh, quotes then we have 102 we have customer id is 2 right then we can say this is the orders data then we can have orders column equals to so we have order id then the next column that we have is customer id right so we will be writing customer id as our next column now let us just create this order data frame so i'll just scroll down so we have orders df where we will say spark dot create data frame we will pass orders data as data and then we will pass orders column as column right then so we have this orders df ready now then uh, we will be creating the other data frame which is the order details data frame so let us just define the data first so orders detail data frame we have 101 we have a we need to give it in the string in double quotes and then we have 100.0 so we have it as a flow type and then we can pass the other row which is 101 again and then we have product as b and then we have price as 50 okay then the third record which is 102 this is for the product a and the price of this product is 100 right so this is our uh, data of orders details data frame now let's create orders details columns so what all columns we have we have order id then we have product then we have price correct now let's just create this data frame so orders detail df 
full tool spark dot create data frame we need to pass orders detail data frame which is the data and then we will be passing orders detail column which are the columns right so let me just run this so we have these two data frame that is created which one is the order id and the customer id the other is order id product and the price correct so now uh, we'll just go to the next part of the question which is basically extracting the total order value for each customer so in order to extract this value like this particular result we would need to join these two tables uh, so the common column that we have in order to join this two table is order ID. So we will be joining these two tables on the order ID so that uh, we, we, we can have a record like let's say for order ID 101, if we take this one record, this will be joined with both the records that we have in the order details here. So that is all, this is also one of the, uh, basically you will get these kind of questions in, uh, in also in an interview which will be kind of very generic uh, or very basic question where they might ask you okay you have one column order id where you have 101 102 let's say just one column similarly you have other table as order details where you have one column order id is 101 101 and 102 so what how many number of records you will get if you join these two different data frames in each kind of join right so if i'm talking here in our case we will be doing an inner join on this order id so 101 record of this data frame will be joined with these two records right since we have two records here so once we once it gets joined with these two records we will have the customer id as well right and then we can find it out what is the total price correct okay? same thing goes for the other order id as well right so let us just perform this aggregation okay so what we'll do is let's say we are creating this join data frame okay and now where we have two data frame one is orders df uh, joining it with the other data frame which is orders detail df right so if you could see we are joining these two data frame orders data frame orders detail data frame and we are getting this data frame as an output so what column you want to join so that's what you have to specify it here i need to join it based on the order id okay so let us just specify order id here and then what kind of join that you want to do so i want to do an inner join here so let's say this once we run this we have the join df which will be basically is the join in a join of these two different data frames so if i'll just show you the output of this let's say i'll write join df dot show so you'll see here now we have order id we have customer id uh, we have product and we have price as i mentioned earlier this order id from the first table will be joining with the two records that we have in another table or another data frame right so that's where we are getting two records for that and one record for 102 and now it is it you see we just have to do and do a sum of these two records which belongs to let's say one customer correct so we just need to do a sum of price based on group by or basically you could say which on the customer id right so next thing that we need to do is let's say customer sales equals to the data which we have the data frame join df okay the same thing which we did in the last question where we were doing a group by on let's say customer id correct we will be performing an aggregate let's say aggregate and then we will do a sum of price let us let us just name it as name this column as total sales okay i think we are good now if i run this meanwhile this runs i'll just write the next term one let's say once it runs we will see over the output of the same so yeah 
here it is so we have total sales as 150 for customer id 1 similarly we have total sales as 100 for customer id 2 right so that's how uh, basically uh, you will understand you will do a join between two different data frames so basically the intention of this uh, question was to understand how good you are and with the concept of joining the concept of aggregation right so uh, this is a, this is one of the most important question which uh, you can get in any of your interviews also one more thing i want to add here which i have not added because it might be already uh, imported in my case uh, let's say here few of the things that we are using like let's say we are using aggregate we are using sum right so before using it what you you need to import this from the PySpark SQL function library. So you you are supposed to write like as a from PySpark dot SQL dot functions. Okay. You can import some average count whatever you want, right? So that's it. So I, we we are good with the second question. Now let's just move to the another one, which is the calculate moving average. Okay. So here we have a data frame where we have date, we have stock symbol, we have price. Okay. Right? So what do we need to do here is we need to calculate seven day moving average. So we need to calculate seven day moving average of daily stock prices using five spark window function so it is this question is automatically like uh, already specifying what kind of functions you are supposed to use window function for a data frame stock data like this is a stock data data frame with columns as this correct so in order to figure it out what is the seven day moving average right so first of all let us just create a data with like data frame so i will be creating a data equals to so let's say we have this date so we will put it in the quotes okay then we have double apl which is stock symbol and then we have 150 let me add few more by while copying this same let i'll add few extra records so that we can have a seven day moving average records right so let's say this is uh 2023 first january okay let's say this is second similarly we have third fourth okay so let's say this is for a p n okay so 150 then we have 155 and then we have 152 okay then let's take any random number like okay, we have 158 already mentioned there so let's take as 158 okay so this is one of the stock symbol uh, let's say for apple uh, let's uh, let's let's take any other stock symbol like uh, x y z okay let's take any other value like 2500 similarly this is for the same date which is 2023 let's say not 2023 let's keep it as xyz and let's increase some price by 20 so 2520 then we have xyz and let's say uh, Two five three zero. Then okay, I'll just change the dates as well. Let me change it here as well. So X Y Z. Then let us assume the value two five five zero. Okay. So now we have this data. Now let us define the columns. So we have columns. And let me just change it to smaller case. Okay. So we have columns. First column is date. Second column is stock symbol. Right. 
and then third column is price. And now let's create the data frame. So we have stock df equals to spark dot create data frame. Let's pass data and columns. Let's run this. Okay, so we have created this uh, data frame as uh, where well, we have three columns, which is the eight columns, stock symbol, and then the price. All right. So as the question specifies, we need to do a uh, we need to use the window function in order to find out the moving average. Right. So we can create uh, the window specification, like what should be the specification for the window functions. Right. So window spec. And then uh, we can mention as let's say window dot partition by so we 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 are doing a partition on which column basically needs to be done on the stock symbol right so that we can have a partition on this tables then only we can find it out the running sum of this price right so we will be doing this partition by on the stock symbol let's say we also need to specify let's say i'll be specifying order by what order i need to uh, sort my data for so let's say i'll be doing on the order by the dates right and then in order to specify it's for seven days i'll just use rows between so if you'll see here we have start and end right so we'll be using rows between we will be specifying minus six to zero right so it will take those seven days records so once this windows uh, specification is designed then you can uh, go ahead with creation of the your data frame so like let's say moving data frame right so this moving data frame will have or like let's say we'll take this stock data frame that we have created so since we need to uh, have a new column as a moving average so that is some kind of a derived column that we are supposed to do right so we will be uh, using with column so we need to specify what 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 is the name of the new column that we will be creating let's say it is moving average right and then we need to create uh, find it out the average of what column we need to take so we need to take the average of price column correct and then here is where you need to specify over the window specification that you have mentioned correct so what, what are we doing here first we have the data we have the columns we have created the data frame till here it's fine now in order to do a running sum basically or running like average First of all, we are specifying a window function, which is where we are saying that, okay, do a partition on this column based on this particular order date and take only these records between minus 6 to 0, right? And create a new column, which is the moving average on this condition, right? So also uh, before running this, correct? you would need to uh, import the required library so let's say from pyspark dot sql dot window you can import window okay so that window we are using here and then we have a window a moving data frame correct so let me just run or let's show you this moving data frame output okay so if you see now we have first january second january third january fourth january four records for apple right the price is 150 155 152 158 we are finding out the moving average so 150 plus 155 if you all if you'll find out the what is the average you'll get 152.5 similarly if you'll go to 155 and 152 and you'll find out the average so then this will be the average so this is how uh, we will be creating the moving average of any 
uh, data that is provided using the partition by uh, and let's say uh, doing a window functions and all these stuff right so I, I believe uh, you would have uh, get this point if you have any doubts you could just write us in comments and then we will be happy to assist you okay so let us just go to the another question which was asked which was basically pointing towards creation of use like user defined function that is UDF right so here what do we want to do is let's say they, they want us to define a PySpark UDF that takes a column of email address and starts the do domain like gmail.com yahoo.com right apply this UDF to a data frame with an email column so we have this email column where we have john do at the rate gmail.com we just need to extract the domain out of these emails correct so let's just uh, try to solve this interesting question okay so same approach first we will be specific we will be specifying the data okay so what data do we have so we have the very first thing in the email which is john Day. let me just copy this okay now the other record that we have which is Jen Smith let me copy this as well cool so this is the data that we have what column we have so let's say we have just one column email Sorry. okay so we have this column now let's just create a data frame which is df equals to spark dot create data frame where we will be passing data and we will be passing column let's let us just run this so we are getting this error because see what we are doing here is we are taking these two emails as the data right so basically whenever you are defining a data okay it should be list of tuples and not the list of string right that means in our case it is list of string right so we have this as one string we have this as one string and that's the reason it is saying that it cannot infer schema for any string type so it needs to be a tuple so let's say if i give an additional column comma here that means it is a uh, like basically it is having just one element here and similarly if i'll give it here it is having one element so this is like kind of a list of people in this case let's try this and let's see how this goes yeah so it is running so we have this data frame now where we have this email where which we have created okay so now we need to define a user defined function correct which is udf where we need to extract the domain from the email address right so it is just like a, a function like where we will be giving the f let's say we have to extract the domain correct and then we will be having email correct so let's say this email it will take as an input and it will return if we'll do email dot split we will do a split on at the rate because we need the domain which will come after at the rate and then we will specify after splitting just take the first part of it so in this case if you will split on this at the rate basically the part before this at the rate it will be having an index as zero part after that the rate will be having index at the uh, index as, as one so hence we are taking them as one right so this is where we are defining our user defined function now in order to register this user defined function let's say i will use uh, existing or let's say extract a domain udf equals to this is where we are registering our udf let's say udf then we will pass extract domain extract domain and then we need to have this for the string type okay so that this is where you are basically registering your user defined function now once you have registered your user defined function you need to apply this udf to the data frame 
so that in that new data frame that where we will be applying so we will be taking the f which is our old data frame okay now we we need to have a new column where we will be having a domain so we will be using with column okay and then we will be passing the new column name let's say domain column okay now this is where we need to uh, call our udf so we will have extract domain udf which we have registered and then we will pass which column so from the data frame df we are passing email column as an input correct so let's just run this okay so this is where our new data frame is created let's just see the records of it cool so if you see here we have extracted the domain out of these emails right so this is where you need to create a udf and then you need to uh, you need to have the logic behind that function by registering that function as a udf and then you will be creating a new column where you are calling this udf right so that's it for the udf side uh, do let me know if you have any doubts or if you want to know more about udf we can we can create a video for for these logics as well okay so like now let's let's come to the last question that we have where we have this data where we have to parse this data as a json column in this PySpark data frame right so which is we have the data frame as employee data where with the employee information and extract the employee name so if you'll see here we have this employee data where we have name as allies name as bob right so we need to parse this into basically a json correct so what you do first of all you will define a data let's say the same thing that we we are following up now but since this is a json file the format needs to be a bit different right so we will be having this bracket then we need to specify curly braces right so this is something a special character so in order to um, like neglect this special character you could say we need to we will be passing this and then we'll have a name correct and then okay then we will be giving colon and then we have allies so let's say we have allies okay so now we are closing with the curly braces then we have this and then we will be having comma okay i think we are we so since we we, we are just giving this i'm just giving this comma because of the previous example that we saw so that we don't face that issue again okay so after this we have the close bracket and then we will be giving one more comma right and then let me just copy this again okay now let me keep this as bob okay i think we are good with the data let's create the column the column is nothing but employee data right now let's create the data frame equals to spark dot create data frame then we have data we have column let's run this so we have this data now okay if i just show it to you this is how it looks okay now in order to parse it in a json we need to define the json schema right so let's say we we need to have the json schema as struct type okay then we will be giving the struct field and let's say the very first column which is like the very first value which is name and then we are specifying it as string okay okay so this is how we are basically defining the json schema now we need to convert this json string to a struct type basically so let's say we can have a pass df where we are saying that 
let's say we are creating a new column as employee data so basically we already have some just doing a modification to it so it won't create any additional column as such so we will be using from json and then we need to specify what column we are taking let's say here in our case we are taking employee data itself right and then what is the schema that you have defined right so that's where you have to specify the schema so basically what we are doing here is we are we currently have the data frame as this employee data which is having this key and value kind of like a structure right kind of json value which we have so we are specifying this employee data as a column where we upon the json we are taking this column employee data and we are defining this data in based on this schema so that's what we are doing in this past df okay now once we have this past past df so let's say i'll just want to show you first like how exactly it will come okay so if you see we have now allies and we have bob as the employee data here right now if you want to extract the name field specifically like let's say i'll just do a past df equals to past df dot with column okay i'll create a new column which is name we well, don't have name column as of now right so and i'll just use column and then out of this employee data which you are having i am saying take the name okay now if you see the output of this So basically, you we are able to load the data like the pass the data from the JSON and able to load it into a data frame. Like right? we have now two different columns: one is the employee data, one is the name, and this is how it looks like. Okay. So uh, I think uh, we are good. Uh, we are good for all of these questions. Uh, do let me know. Lee, you could just directly put it in the comments, or you could just reach out to us in the LinkedIn. Uh, we will be happy to assist you. Uh, if you want to cover any new topic or if you want to uh, have any of uh, more understanding on any of the concepts do let us know in the comments and we will be happy to assist you okay so thank you so much thank you for uh, watching this video and please do not forget to subscribe because that will really help us to bring more videos to help you guys okay so thank you so much have a nice day bye